Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 18th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yijing has an update on the 5G Hool or 5 Ghoul vulnerabilities. Yijing is part of the group that did some of the research on these vulnerabilities and the update does show how some of the Phones were updated and also the lack of updates for phones, in particular for some older models. This is an ongoing problem for Android where older models are often no longer receiving updates. And in this particular case, of course, uh, the update does affect the 5G modem. So often the cooperation and validation of these uh, new firmware versions by the uh, telecom operator uh, has to be done first before they can be pushed out to the end user. And the DA has a post explaining how to not just uh, decode a hexadecimal payload, but also how to work around some of the pitfalls that you may run into, like in this case, the encoding not being identified correctly. So DDA walks you through this particular sample, how to eliminate some of the additional characters that were inserted for obfuscation after removing them. The file pretty straightforwardly decodes back to a cobalt strike beacon. And researchers from SALT looked into some interesting vulnerabilities in ChatGPT related to plugins. The problem here is that, of course, you have to connect the plugin to ChatGPT and it uses OAuth in order to accomplish this. Normally, what happens is that ChatGPT sends you to the website that you would like to authenticate with, and then that website sends you back a token that's then being used for authentication. The issue is that an attacker could also start this flow and send you a link that basically links the attacker's account with your chat GPT account and that way gives the attacker access to your data. That's a common OAuth issue where essentially the website, in this case chat GPT, doesn't verify that the user actually initiated the initial connection between the plugin and the chat GPT website in this case. They also pointed out a second vulnerability. That one is in Plugin Lab. Plugin Lab allows you to basically create these connections between plugins and ChatGPT. Well, the problem here is that an attacker can not only get access to your ChatGPT account, but also to accounts like GitHub or such that can be authenticated via this plugin lab. Interesting vulnerabilities. Now, uh, plugins in that form have in more recent months become less important uh, for ChatGPT, but these vulnerabilities have been fixed before Salt published this blog post. I think they're still interesting because they are good uh, examples of some of the common implementation issues that you're running into with OAuth. And Red Canary released uh, their threat detection report for 2024. Of course, that mostly covers what happened in 2023. Seen uh, one interesting item here uh, being pointed out by, for example, the registrant. Uh, I want to point your attention to it, but there's really lots of good wisdom in that report. And uh, one item that I saw sort of being pointed out was attacks against help desks. And I think that's certainly sort of an important trend that's uh, going around and something that I don't really see a lot of uh, good steps that companies are taking to protect their help desks from uh, these attacks. Help desks do have a lot of sensitive data. They're often uh, the sort of you know, lower tier uh, people in your IT organization. So not necessarily that well trained when it comes uh, to detecting some of these more sophisticated attacks against them. Pretty interesting report overall. Highly recommend that you do take a look at it and uh, see how you're sort of detecting some of these uh, techniques that are being pointed out in this report. 
And according to updated baseline requirements from the Certificate Authority and Browser Forum or CAB Forum, Certificate Authorities must now, and that started actually Friday, include Certificate Revocation List endpoints in any certificates they issue. There has been a little bit forth and back over the last couple of years between Certificate Revocation Lists and OCSP, the Online Certificate Status Protocol, OCSP is no longer required and no longer sufficient if that's the only thing that you're offering. One of the big changes here is likely coming to Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt has only used OCSP in the past, but will now also have to start using certificate revocation lists. Any revoked certificates must be added to these lists within 24 hours. Of course, uh, these certificate revocation lists, they come sort of with a validity time for how long they can be cached, and that often exceeds several days. Also, Google Chrome historically has always not used the direct certificate revocation lists, but a certificate revocation list that Google assembled from all the various lists out there to make sort of that update process a little bit more streamlined. We'll have to see what that in practice means for revocation. Certificate revocation has always been sort of a little bit an iffy topic that often has not worked as well as it should. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. and. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.